Welcome to the Team Woods Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Fain, and today's guest is a Youngstown artist creating beautiful portraits that capture both hometown life and celebrate our culture and history. Let's welcome Mr. Will Duck to the podcast. This is Scott Fain with the Team Woods Podcast, and I'm here today, very fortunately here today with Mr. Will Duck, artist and local entrepreneur in Youngstown. Uh, just as a little background, I, I first met you, Will, when we uh, met at the YSU Art Festival a couple of years ago with my partner, Matthew, uh, my business partner, and um, just, you know, really dug a lot of the pieces. You know, you were doing a lot of artwork that um, was touched on stuff that we liked, you know, sports and music and, and things like that. And then uh, we lost track a little bit and then all this stuff with the uh, COVID happened and uh, Matt was able to reconnect with you uh, recently at the recent YSU festival, art festival. Yeah. And um, one of the things that you had mentioned to him at the time was that you wanted to be investing more time in your business. And he was saying to me that uh, we want to throw some support and love at your journey. And um, just because, you know, we really were digging with you, what you were doing. And uh, at some point we like to even uh, get you to a place where you can speak with some of the Know Your Neighbor students. You know, we, we work with uh, a local nonprofit that deals with youth. And it'd be nice to be letting, talk to somebody like yourself that's doing something with his artwork and creating something in the, in the community. So welcome. Yes. And uh, thank you for All spending right. some time. <laughs> so, okay. uh, how did you like the art festival being at the new location from where it was before? Uh, at first, I was a little skeptical of, it, you know, because it was a new location. I, this was my 16th year doing it. Hmm. And then we had took a year off last year. So, you know, people was used to it being down at on YSU campus. But after the couple of days doing it, I kind of liked it, to tell you the truth. I kind of changed my perspective of it, you know, um, being in a different location. So, you know, I, I you know, I kind of I'm a little on the even fence with it, but I think it it was it was a good thing. I think it yeah. would turned out to be a, a good thing being down on on uh, next to the Cavelli Center downtown Youngstown. Mm -hmm. I think more people. You know, on the campus, it's kind of secluded up into the campus. Mm -hmm. But being down there next to the Cavelli Center, people coming down over Market Street Bridge, you can see what's happening. Festival is going on, and they probably was wondering what's going on down there. And maybe they in, in, didn't intentionally want to stop down there. But seeing all the people down there, they, I think it brought more people. Yeah, down there just like to see what was going on. So, and, you know, I enjoyed it. I, I think, I think, you know, I'm not on the final decision on what it should be, where it should be next year, but I wouldn't mind having it back there next year at all. You know? Then I'll be able to come out and, and do that too. Cause I, I enjoyed that. It was, it was fun having all of the different artists from all over that Midwestern area, you know, come out to yeah. share their work and stuff. Yeah, um, maybe get a booth my own <laughs> at some point. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so, how, how long have you lived in Youngstown? Um, I lived in Youngstown majority of all my life. Um, I did end up moving to Pittsburgh for a few years. Um, that's where I went to art school at and graduated from the Art Institute of Pittsburgh. So, I stayed up there about five years, six years. Then I end up coming back down here to Youngstown. Once, um, once I came down to visit a few times, and I wanted to just get in tune with the art, art scene down here, and just kind of, um, kind of boost it up a little bit. It was, seemed like it was a little, it's a little dim, and I wanted to just come in, meet some new artists, get with some old artists, and put some things together and and um, end up staying and, 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 and enjoying as the art scene, art scene boosting a little bit down here in Youngstown. You mentioned the art scene. The one thing I noticed, um, it's small uh, when I come through to visit is uh, there's are a lot of different murals and, and things like that. You just kind of notice in passing 
is yeah. uh, like what's where's the rest of the art like is there an art spot or a place to celebrate artists in Youngstown um yeah I think it I think it is it's it's, it's spread it out um you have uh you know you got the Madonna Museum for students on Washu campus and you got the Butler Art Institute and um then you got a little couple of like grassroots artists throughout the area. And, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, everybody getting to know each other, just bringing young artists and people that's been doing it for a while together. And I think the community, I would like more that they embrace the artists here. And, and I think we're doing a better job at it. I think we always could do better, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's it's around. You will find it's 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 better than what it used to be when I first got back here, but it's starting to get a lot better. Mm -hmm. People coming yeah. together. Well, uh, how yeah. did you get uh, started painting? I got started painting. Um, I was fortunate to have some good art teachers growing up. Um, I really used to draw a lot like a lot of kids you know when we were in class you start drawing and, and um and some when i was six years old i drew a dinosaur in a uh, kindergarten I drew a dinosaur for my teacher and she loved it and the rest of the class loved it and some just told me this is what i should be doing so i ended up just practicing mm -hmm. staying in the house my mom used to have to kick me out of the house to go out and play because I was in there practice drawing uh, superheroes and, and spaceships and things like that. And I would just stay hours and hours in there drawing and she would have to kick me out the house to go out and play, <laughs> you know, just to keep me away from drawing. I just stuck to it. I didn't really start painting till I got to high school. Um, and I started really working with colors and just trying to get um a basic of painting because I always was scared to paint because I was like I can't you know I was coloring and just you know so painting was a little scary for me but once I broke that but a good art teacher just taught me the basics mm -hmm. and um I stuck with it I thought I was uh I thought I was decent until I ended up going to art school and and learning that I really didn't know as much as I thought I did, because I'm glad I did end up going to a school like the Art Institute because it it taught me a lot of things that I it, it, you know I got straight into painting and, and straight into them teaching me. Even though the first year we never worked with color, we just worked with black and white, and I think that helped me a lot as far as blending learning how to blend without color before I learned how to really paint with colors. It, it taught me a lot just working with black and white. It, it was frustrating for me at first, but it, it did end up teaching me patience and the um, painting of blending and mixing and everything. Sometimes it's about learning the fundamentals. I understand yep. that. Yeah. It's like if right. everything else goes away, if you got the fundamentals, you can at least build on top of that. So exactly. exactly. Did you did you have anyone at home or anywhere in your community before art school that was an influence as far as getting you started? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um I looked at a lot of artists when I was in the seventh and eighth grade. Um, an artist by the name of Bill Dotson. He stopped by to talk to the artists and the, the people of students in the art class. And he does a little scribble pen and ink drawings. And when I saw that, I was like, wow, you know, I mean, he's a master at it. And uh, that's what got me. I do some pen and ink scribbling just from seeing him when I was at that age. And, that, and then talking to him at that early age, just it, it showed me how to practice on my craft because he had told me. He said, just practice on your craft. Whatever you want to do, paint, draw, just get you a sketchbook and practice and uh, you'll get it. And then that's what I ended up doing. But M. Bill Dotson, 
artist called The Count down here. He he encouraged me and watching him over the years. And then just really um, my fellow students, people I went to school with, a couple artists I know, um, Dominique Guy, we always just competed during high school. And and, and it, it, it really just made me sharpen my skills mm-hmm. and wanted to be better at what I was uh, um, drawing and painting. So basically, that's yeah, that's about it. That's about it. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> tell me about the first painting that you sold and, and how much did you sell it for? I'm curious about that aspect. It's, 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 it was weird because when I was growing up, my mom, she owned a bar on the east side. And so I used to do all her signs, her advertisement at a young age, like 13, 14. I was, she'd come to me to make signs for her. So the guys in the bar wanted me to draw, see if I challenged me to draw something. Mm-hmm. And I was, I think I was like 15, 16. But the picture he draw, he, he was a, a, a woman. So it was a woman of, she was kind of not fully dressed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he pulled me to the side and asked me, could I draw this for her? That was my first, I drew it. Mom didn't know about it, but <laughs> I ended up drawing it and he loved it. And that was my, that was my first sale, my first sale of, doing a picture and getting money for it. And I was like, wow, I, this is amazing. This is, I could just, this is what I love to do and I'm get, I could get money for it. Mm-hmm. And so <laughs> that's when I was like, okay. But I'm really, I'm really, I'm not an artist. I'm not an artist really. I don't really paint and draw, even though that's my profession to make, to sell every paint. Mm-hmm. To me, I would paint even if I didn't draw and paint, even if I didn't get paid for it. But most of my paintings that I do, you know, unless it's a, some people order a picture or, or anything, I really just paint for myself and paint things I love, I enjoy before I think about even selling it or doing it for any money. Because to me, I think if, if you're doing a painting for you, I think, and if it's coming from you and something that you really love, I think that it expresses itself out to the people or people that's interested in your paintings. Mm-hmm. You know, of course, I I do do paintings and drawings for money, but even if I didn't have any orders or it didn't, I would do it regardless. Regardless, you know, regardless just for, that's what I love to do, you know. I, I feel that I, sometimes yeah. I, I find it more challenging when someone says, Hey, do I, I can do commissions too, but yeah, the play the, when it comes from in here, it's like easy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's so yeah, easy. It's not even work. It's just like, can't wait to get it out. So you can see, you know, it's like, I can't wait to get this thing finished, but yes, I've yes. gotten thrown a couple of curveballs where it's like, man, how do I, I don't even know how to get yeah, started yeah. with it sometimes. Actually, the, the ones that people want you to do for an order or anything, sometimes it's more challenging because it's, for the most part, it's what they want. So you got to put yourself in their shoes and what they like. And, and a lot of people, they just say, you the artist, you just go off of what you want to do. But you want to do what people, if they make an order for you or want you to do a drawing, it's something they enjoy, but also putting your own your own touch and feel on it because that's what they came to you for, for the most part. Right, right. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. what was the most expensive painting that you ever sold? Um, I would say the most expensive painting I've done actually is the awkward painting because, let me see, I say about 2004. 2004. I did a painting for um, the DeBartolos, and they, which they own a, the San Francisco 49ers, which is their hometown, is here in Youngstown. Hmm. Okay. So we was into doing fiberglass 
statues at that time for, you know, in some cities they got fiberglass statues for, like Cleveland got the guitars around the city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People design them and paint them. That's what we were into. We had penguins down here for I've Young seen South State penguins. Yeah. And I ended up getting commissioned to do the penguin for the 49ers. Mm. But I designed it for the Cleveland Browns. Mr. Barlow ended up seeing it and asked me would I change it to the 49ers because they love the design. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, well, well, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I'm a I'm one of them artists where that's my design, that's what I designed it. And she was like, she was she compromised with me. She said, I tell you what, if you include the 49ers on there, I'll let you keep the Cleveland Browns on the back. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'll do it. Okay, then I'll do it. And that's what ended up happening. And um I ended up painting that and Really, that's what pushed me out into the art scene. Because hmm. before that, I was really just painting in my home, keeping my paintings in my home. Maybe to a couple relatives, I give a couple paintings to. This pushed me out into the opening and let other people see my paintings at the time. But I ended up selling that painting for, I think it was five, almost $6,000. Ooh, but that, good. that was my <laughs> yeah that was my i was like wow you know mm -hmm. wow wow but the painting wasn't a traditional on the canvas painting mm -hmm. it was a, a statue and which was it's really complicated it's really challenging because all the curves and all the you know it's on it's not on a flat surface so i took it as more of a challenge and see what i can do with it and it turned out really nice and, and it really pushed me out into the art scene and did you have to mold it yourself was it like since no, it was they a had them molded they had them sent out and molded and then they had them delivered to the artist oh, okay and you know you just had to design what you design is easy it wasn't easy but to design it on a flat piece of paper you know you had to put your and then the sponsors came around and picked what design they wanted so Seeing it on a flat surface was like, oh, but then when you get it in real life and mm. see it, you're like, oh man, okay. I'm gonna do this. You know, this going around this curve, I'm gonna make this turned out really well, well, and it ended up pushing me out into the art scene. And ever since then, that's when I started doing the festivals, getting more connected with people, getting my name a little known out there through you know, knowing that the Barlow's and there, they was happy with it. Mm. And it just kind of let push me out into the same far as, I mean, you know, maybe your work is, is good enough for you to start showing it to people. That's what I was thinking, mm -hmm. you know, because I was always thinking my work wasn't good enough to be shown, you know, as a young artist and just out there, not really, you know, I'm kind of quiet. And that kind of pushed me out to say, yeah, you need to bring your artwork out a little bit more and let people see it and see what you can do with it. It's some of that imposter syndrome that we all kind of face yeah. sometimes. It's like, oh yeah, oh nobody want this picture, and it's like, ooh, exactly. this is so pretty, and uh, you know, mm -hmm. stuff connects with people in different ways. There's pictures that I barely like, and I, it's like, wow, how'd you do that? And it's like that you like this one, so I, I yeah. <laughs> you oh, know, yeah. uh, <laughs> well, never know that until you. You put yourself out there a little bit, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where, where do you get your inspiration from before starting a picture? Um, <laughs> it's it's just weird. It, it, it things you know, as an artist, you you kind of uh, things, images, and things just flash up in my in my head when I see something or something I want to do. And these that's the frustrating thing about. As a, you know, I had a favorite instructor back in art school. Her name was Flavia. She's from Germany. And she always, used to always tell me to, to try to draw or paint every day. And when she told me that, I was thinking, that's a, that might be impossible. Every day? She said, every single day. She said, because 
you get these images in your head and you need to get them out and put them on canvas or on paper. And I said, I do get these images. And she said, if you don't, sometimes I can frustrate you. And I cause a buildup in you. And I noticed that with me. Uh, and I don't know if that's like with everyone, but with me, it was. So I get these flashes and designs in my head that I always wanted to do. So I kind of sketch them out if I don't paint them out. And so when I'm about to start a painting, I like to listen to music. And whatever the subject I'm painting, I like to relate that to the music that uh, in the subject that I'm painting. Mm -hmm. So if I'm painting a Kobe or, you know, like before the Kobe, I watched the, the, all the images of what was going on and the sad scene. And, and then I would go back and watch the highlights. And then I just go out the canvas and I start painting from the feelings that was going on. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, something, and it's like that when I, if I paint Ray Charles, I listen to Ray Charles, I watch the movie. You know, I look at, I don't know how countless different images before. And so it all depends on the subject. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, I've got a couple young artists, my, my kids, a couple of artists and just coming up and I just tell them how to weigh out when you get a, a subject or 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 you're doing a piece for someone, I way before the piece start, I you know I do get references, research, all these type of things before I start to make sure you know I'm in the right mode. I'm in the for that painting because to me, when people when you're doing it for someone that personal or doing something that personal. What you're going through and what you're putting on canvas, I think it express out to the to the person or the people that's looking at it or 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 purchasing it. So I think whatever you put down, I think that reflects, you know, to the piece. So I that's that's how I start my, you know, not all of them, but most of them, mm -hmm. to make sure I'm putting my all into a painting or a drawing because I get a lot of personal um, pictures that people want me to paint, that they hanging in their homes, somebody that made a past or somebody real special to them. And I treat it as if I was doing it for my own family mm -hmm. and you hanging a, a picture in your home that meant so much to you. So I, I gotta give them that respect and put my all into it so they can see that. And so they won't be disappointed or, they, or when they get the painting that I just slap some on the canvas just to get paid. So it has to be personal to me as much as it is to them so they can see that on the canvas or on the picture. You know, that's important to me. That's out of the way I like to do it mm -hmm. because it's, it's, it's a personal thing when you do it to me because my paintings is like my kids. I take them real personal. So doing it for somebody to me is personal to me so that's I how that. i try to do it yeah i feel that uh, i want to take a few minutes <clears throat> before we wrap up and just go through the pieces that you sent me uh starting okay. with the one that's over your shoulder uh the kobe one yeah uh, was it the this was I'm, I'm assuming you did this one right after he passed right after he passed yeah okay right uh, before the funeral yeah okay uh like how long did it take you to make that one Say so it may have took about three weeks, maybe about three weeks on and off. Um, the Kobe, the, the, this, the Kobe one was a, it was a, like I said, it was, I was watching everything and, and my, my wife, I just stopped and just grabbed the canvas. She said, you bought the, I said, I gotta, I gotta do something. I gotta, you know, the, you know, the coverage they was giving him and the sad situation. I said, I, I the only thing I know how to do is, Try to put some down on canvas and see mm -hmm. what I what I can do just to get through the sad situation that was going on. So I basically was watching the every all the coverage and just decided that's what I'm gonna pull out some canvas. See if I'm, I can put some down on canvas to represent him. And um, yeah, that's how you know the thing started with it. 
I like yeah. the thing I like about the Kobe one is um, a lot of your stuff. It, it's the choice of how they're framed, the, how they, you know, the images that you used as reference. Because I yeah. didn't even think about that with the um, with Kobe uh, laying on the ball. Like that's a something yeah. it probably did in practice, but it's a quiet moment. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a it's a the different images I went through, and I wanted to make it seem like he was thinking about his basketball career, mm -hmm. you know, um, him laying down. I just love that, him concentrating on different things in his career, like the, the one in the middle, he has the five, he putting up five, the five rings. Mm -hmm. And then the one he's shooting the five free throw, he's just, it's just a quiet moment in his, along to go with the, the basketball, land on the ground and, I had to put a highlight of him up in the air dunking, you know, yeah, then the, the back <laughs> one, the back one with the final one with the with the uh, angel wings and and the, yeah. the the really it was the the look on his face, you know, the look on his face was the one really inspired for that one, but right. most of it came from the from him laying on the ground with the basketball. Mm -hmm. I loved that one and like him just. I wanted to make it seem like he just was thinking in the dark back behind the hoop on the floor, which you know how serious Kobe was with, you know, his career and his competitiveness. Mm -hmm. So that's what kind of kind of brought it all together. You know. What about uh the Michael Jordan? Was he your favorite player or like how did that one? Yeah, to me, Michael was the greatest, was my favorite player. Okay. And uh uh Mike. The Michael Jordan was, it was sort of kind of, I was, it was, I did that one in the, in the thing of, because uh, people was, you know, how they compared LeBron and, mm. and, and Mike, and, and I love LeBron and, and just as much, but, you know, in my era, you know, Mike was the best, so I just I wanted too. to paint, you know, because I, I did a couple of LeBrons and, and I said, "Wait a minute! I, I gotta go. I gotta. I gotta go back and do the show <laughs> that you know mm -hmm. ain't forgot. You know, so Jordan was more of a, of a you know, don't forget. You got to bring Jordan back in, and I just it was a fun, really a fun painting because I did a couple of LeBrons, and I did. I said, I need a, I need a, a, a Jordan. So it was more of a celebration of Jordan." And uh, yeah, I love that one. Uh, what you I, did that's with that's one of my favorites too. That's one of my favorites too. And with the city in the back, and I wanted to put the twenty three in like a stone, like iron, like that ain't going nowhere. And mm -hmm. it, it was more of a celebration painting for for Jordan. Is this before or after uh, the Last Dance? <laughs> it was before the Last Dance. Okay, it was before the Last Dance. Yeah. It was before that, you know, I really, for the last dance was, well, I really didn't watch it. I watched it a little bit because I, I was growing up during that time. So we we kind of knew everything <laughs> what was going on, you know, with Jordan and, and everything. But yeah, it was, it was, it was after the last, before the last dance. So I really didn't, didn't watch it too much. I, it was more of what I used to see Jordan do when I was growing up. Yeah, I, just as a thing for me, I, I've never been big on sports. Love basketball, but not watching it day to day and week to week. So the documentary has always been my favorite catch yeah. up when it comes to to stuff like that. Um, talk about your MLK piece. Because I that one, the reason I like that one so much is for my whole life, anytime you see a picture of Martin Luther King, it's always Martin Luther King. You know, he's posing, he's an angel, he's this, he's that. I don't remember seeing a picture like this one where it's just a man praying, you know, praying with other people. And that's the more powerful thing to me. That's like I said, that's one of probably the most powerful Martin Luther King piece I've seen, if I'm being honest. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, that one is this titled a, a prayers protest. Mm -hmm. And the, the reason for that, that's the same thing with what you just said when I saw that. And what was going on at the time with um, 
Colin Kaepernick. Uh, and I, it just brought me to, to back then and to now. And so when I saw all of them praying on down on one knee, I'm like, oh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta capture that. And I was trying to think of something to paint during the time that would resonate with me as far as putting my feelings out there about everything that was going on in the country or still is going on with this protest and getting on the one knee. And so when I saw that Dr. Martin Luther King and, and, and all of them doing that back in the sixties, mm -hmm. I said, I got to somehow, I love that. And I somehow bring what's going on now together. So I, when I painted it, I didn't have Colin Kaepernick in it. And a lot of people don't know that he is in it if you don't really look at it. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know who it was, but uh, it was uh, one of my uh, people I graduated with. I was kind of working on it. And she said, it'd be nice if you put Colin Kaepernick in there. Cause I didn't have him in there at first. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa, you know, like, uh, I don't think I can do that, but if I could, I'd be nice. So I'd just start looking back into the piece and then be like, maybe I could put him in there. So I, I slipped him into the back with, along with the rest of the people and added a, another piece of some other people kneeling. Then I put the protests in the background with the American flag. Just to, you know, because it's it's called a prayers protest because to me, getting on one knee is more of a prayer than, than saying that you're not standing for the American flag or you're not all the different things they were saying. Right. And to me, it was more of a, a peaceful protest, just like Martin Luther King and preached back in the 60s, so. That's what I was trying to accomplish with that piece. I'm not a big, uh, not a big, like, out there. I don't do a lot of pieces like that. Mm -hmm. But at this time and what was going on, I would think that I should. That's, that's it's just my duty. I thought that I need to put something, you know, what I do, it, um, painting or drawing, to show my feelings on on what was going on. So that's that's where all that came from with uh, Martin Luther King uh, yeah, prayers did. protest. I did. Is that the original behind you or is it a copy? Yeah. No, that's the original behind me. Okay. I oh, held on it for it. I've been <laughs> holding on to it. It's one of my favorites. And, you know, these two is uh, probably two of my favorites because of the feelings I went through pain, painting them and the emotions and the, went through painting them. So I kind of got a, a special place for them. So, you know, you know, you get a couple that you love and they still all for sale. It's just, you know, yeah. you know, because the Kobe this weekend at the last weekend at the uh, art festival was the first time I did bring the prayers protest was out before the, uh, virus and everything came, but mm -hmm. Kobe, it was his first time out because, it, and then, you know, they canceled everything last year, so it hasn't got a chance. I wanted people and some of my customers, some of the people that stopped by my booth to at least get a chance to see it, mm -hmm. and I want to display it before I end up, you know, selling it because you know, I love selling pieces. That's one of my favorites that people, it goes to a good place. But once they're gone, they're gone, you know. Right. The original, you know, you know. So I wanted to enjoy them a little bit longer if I do end up selling them or if they someone end up doing lucky enough to buy them or from from me or I end up lucky enough to sell them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I want to keep them, hold on to them for a little bit. Yeah. That, I know that feeling so well. I did something like that. I made something for my sister that's in the spirit of, you know, that show The Wire that I love. And yeah. I made it for her. I loved it on my wall to, because it was a present for her. And I sent it to her, gave it to her. And I was like, you know, I could make this again. So I made it again yeah. for myself. And it's like, I can't just 
keep it. So I put it online. And when you know that's the one, somebody else liked it enough and bought that one. I was like, I'm not doing it again. But like yeah. you say, it's yeah. gone now. <laughs> yeah. It's gone yeah. now. Yeah, once it's gone, and you say you could do it again, and we like, yeah, I could do it again, but you know, you still have don't have that same. Yeah, like I've been doing it the first time. Yeah, know? it's in the world now. It's like I've seen it. You know, um, <laughs> what about Mill Creek Park, uh, Ladderman's Mill? I, I was more curious about that one, just because it, is it is it a famous? Is, excuse me, is, do you have a favorite memory from there? Yeah, as growing up as a kid, I grew up on the south side of Youngstown. I ended up moving to the east side, but as a kid growing up, when I'm first riding our bikes and everything, we started riding through Mill Creek Park. You know, if you're from Youngstown, that was most of the kids lived on the south side. You rode through Mill Creek Park. And Latterman's Mill was always my favorite as far as stopping over there. It's a bridge that you take that picture from that's looking down onto the into the okay. um into Latimer's Mill and the water coming over. And I used to be amazed when I was a kid, just like, wow. And so I always wanted, you know, to paint it. It's my, really my second painting of it. I did one before, not exactly uh, this one, but mm -hmm. actually the Latimer's Mill was done in oils. And I usually paint in acrylics. I started out in oils and I went to acrylics. Now I went back to oils for this painting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, if, if, if I did it during the, um, when everything shut down, it's something I wanted to do to get away from, because I love doing portraits. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to, let me do something in I, uh, landscaping. So I, I always go down there. When I go down there, walk through, I took a picture and I just store them. And I came across, I always wanted to paint that one. So I took the time when everything was shut down just to, Concentrate on that one. Took me a little longer. It took me maybe a month or two hmm. to finish that one because I would stop and go back to it. And, and um, but it's also one of my one of my favorites. It is a cool uh, picture. I, I don't. You. I don't think I've actually been. To, I've been to Mill Creek Park. Uh, Matt's taking me through there. You know, we we'll do the bikes yeah. and stuff like you talk about. But I don't think I've actually seen that. Uh, just on a technical level, when it comes to the straight edges and the straight angles, are you measuring that out or doing that with a ruler to get them straight? Or are you doing it freehand? Uh, it's freehand. Okay. Freehand. And it, it took about, took a lot of time. <laughs> it took a lot of time. And I don't, I'm not a, like a straight, straight freehand. Uh, I, I always uh, give you the, the illusion that it's, straight but actually they're not they're really straight a couple of them combined but it, it took uh, a few times to go over it to make the wood look like you know real wood, it was wood. yeah mm -hmm. you know it was wood and it was frustrating for a little bit you know and I would draw them out and they would be crooked some of them be crooked and I'd be like you know what let's get them just all get them going in the same direction in the same dimension they're supposed to be going whether they skinny fat you know and they end up working out uh you know that's the beauty of working with oils you know if it was messed up i can you know they don't it don't dry as fast so i can go back straighten it out or you know if it's looking crooked to me or you know then at a certain point i just say you know what let's just roll with it because actually they're not that straight on the wood because the you know, Lammers Mill is so old, so, you know, so, so it gives you the image of they're just like real straight lines. But if you look closely at the painting, you can tell, you can see the wiggly, <laughs> you know, as I was getting, you know, close to it. But yeah, yeah. I, I'm running out of time, but I, I didn't want to leave without talking about these last two. Uh, the George yeah. Clinton cover. Um like that one's cool just for, from us that love Parliament and Funkadelic. Yeah. Um, yeah. More, I'm curious as to what's your favorite George Clinton album and the album cover specifically, since that you know they did a lot with uh, the art yeah. from that. Probably my favorite George Clinton album, just from George Clinton, is probably "Do Fries Go with That Shake." <laughs> uh, that album, but far as with Parliament Funkadelic, probably. Um, Chocolate City, or you know, Mothership Connection, 
It was probably my, it's hard to get one because I'm a real funk fan. You know, I'm a George Clinton fan and I'm a, a, a P-Funk fan. So I'm probably going to do some more George Clinton. I, I'm working on one now with all the whole band on stage. And you know how big Punkadelic was. So it's yeah. kind of a big painting. And I'm a real big funk fan. And that actually that painting, it didn't even make it out of, I was working on it in one of my old jobs. And one of my old jobs where you can see the background, I'm painting in a booth. And so people driving by can see me painting. And someone saw me painting and I wasn't even finished with it. And they came and bought it before I even finished with it. And so I was like, well, I'm going I'm to do another one. I just kind of did that one in between paintings to, Keep keep practicing and keep working on a skill. So that was like an in between painting. Mm -hmm. So I always wanted to do one of the whole P Funk band or George coming off the mothership, Doctor Funky Stein. So I, I can't wait to see that. I, that's going to be a good one, I, I, especially with the band. I love oh, all oh, the, you know all the guys together. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, yeah. what about the? Well, I, I we're about to get cut off here, but uh, what advice would you give to other artists getting started? I would just say, just practice on your craft, practice on what you love to do, um, keep at it, and just try to get better. And try to look at other artists, look at other ways other artists do things. Try to incorporate that into what you do, and. Um, Always, always stay creative and always try to learn new things. That's what I try to do. All right. Well, I appreciate you taking some time with me today. I, I learned a lot and really appreciated hearing, you know, how your journey is and what you've been doing. I, I love the work you do. Please continue. And uh, let's get together again soon, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate All right you. Now. All right. Now. All right. Take it easy.